Congratulations, Jan. Uh, certainly one of the biggest wins of your career. Give us the idea what the uh, the emotion is like after that result. I'm happy, you know. Uh, great. I feel just great, you know. I cannot believe it, what's happening right now. But I still I believe the, the biggest win is still somewhere in the future. Yeah. You called the left hook finish. You said that's how you were going to get it done. What was? What did you know? How did you foresee that? You no, know, I see this uh, the left hook uh, when I prepare for this battle in my dreams, when I do my mentality training, so I just believe in that, then I, then I can hit him, this left hook, I watch uh, you know, uh, how Bisping do this in his fight 10,000 times, so I just know it, it will come. You're never a big talker, but after it, I saw you pointed down to your foot, you know, kind of in reference to the face-off, of course, at the media day, so give an idea, I mean, was this an emotional thing for you, I mean, was this personal for you? Because when you do face-off, a uh, few days before fight, he say, ah, you've got small foot, feet, yeah? I say, I don't know why he say that, and I say, say to him that he gonna feel it in the fight, my feet. And in the last of the first round, he feel it. Very nice. And you said afterwards, you said, hey, there were rumors that he's gonna get a title shot, now I want... You didn't exactly make a strong case, you just said, yeah, maybe I deserve a title shot. So, make the case now, tell us why you deserve the next title shot. I don't know. I think I deserve. I beat Luke Lockhorn. He's a great fighter. I knock him out. So maybe I would like to, you know. I have 36 years old, so now is the best time for me. Yeah, and just one from me. Um, after the fight, uh, it showed you on TV saying something to Dana White through the cage. What, what were you saying? I just asked him, did he like uh, my fight? And he said that he liked it, and uh, I just say him that I'm proud and I can be part of the uh, UFC. That's it. And um, what about a turnaround? Obviously, the massive win for you tonight, but are you carrying, carrying any injuries from this? No, nothing. You know, like after the fight, you know, some scratches, some something, but uh, nothing serious. Jan, uh, straight ahead. The uh, kick you landed right at the end of the first round really seemed to have Rockholt rattled. When you came out for the second, could you tell that that kick had still affected him? I think so, yes. I see this in his eyes. He, he go down. He was a little bit dizzy. Uh, my, coach say, my coach says to me that he's hurt, but be careful. Put pressure on him. He's yours. So I just did it. And in that first round, did you see any tells with him that opened him up for that hook? that you eventually landed in the second? Did you see indications of that opportunity in the first round? I look at uh, this, uh, this left hand all the time, but it will come in, uh, in second. That was my, my plan, you know, to, to hit him the, the left hand. Yeah, and that was his, uh, over here, th that was his first fight at light heavyweight. Did he feel strong? Did he feel any, any weaker, stronger than anybody he faced? I think so, yes, because I said this before fight that uh, in two of five, it's different cardio, different uh, you know, uh, conditioning, dif different uh, timing. And I think so he feel, he feel it, that it's much different. But the sparring is different, fight is different. Did he do anything that surprised you? Did he stun you at all and feel any uh, power from him? I, no, he did, he did it, did, did that what we think he's going to exactly do. Yeah. Jan over here on your right. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, action in the light heavyweight division. There's Johnny Walker, there's Dominic Reyes. You have been at the top of the division for a while. What do you think is next for you? And I'm, I think I come back to the top of the division and someone from the top. Did you see the main event and what were your thoughts on the fight? How did you score it? Yeah, John Jones win the fight, but it was a great fight. Uh, you know, Thiago showed his best and it was nice to watch the fight. That's all? So, thank you. <laughs> well, fastest knockout in USC history and uh, clearly a fight that was very personal to you. So, uh, along, <laughs> yeah, along the way, uh, you've had some great wins. Where, where does this one rank all time out of, of all your accomplishments? Wasn't personal, man. I just don't like the dude. I knew how to get inside his head, and uh, that's it, man. You know, there's nothing personal for me. It's just business. I'm here to get these checks, get paid. 
and uh, make sure that I, got, I put enough money away for my kids to go to university so that belts was next. And um, I'm glad I got to end that dude, man. You started with flying knees before. I mean, was there a decision that, you know, you thought you could knock him out with it, or is that just the way you wanted to start the fight? I mean, why was that the, the initial move? Uh, he's so predictable, man. He's, he's a scrub. But a part of me just wanted to throw it out there so he knew, like, if you do shoot like an idiot, like you only know how to, your head's going to get clipped, and that would put the brakes on him, and then I'd beat him up for 14 minutes and 30 seconds and execute him. Or, you know, he took the bait. You know, I put my hands behind my back. He probably thought we were going to fucking patty kick it up or something. I don't know. But he walked right into it, you know. I saw some criticism. People say the punches weren't really necessary. Maybe They were super necessary. <laughs> why were they necessary? What do you mean, why were they not necessary? Because he was already knocked out at that point. But it, the referee hadn't pulled me off. And my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off. So to those people, I would say maybe don't watch him and may go back to soccer. I saw some other criticisms, perhaps, of your celebration afterwards. Any regrets at the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? I, man, there's not too many people that I've disliked. I have over 50 pro fights, and he's one of them, you know. He talked about my manhood, talked about my culture, my ethnicity. Where, where do we draw? Why do certain people get to do stuff You online? So you could do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want. Like other fighters are not doing, talking about people's religions, wife, even kids. That's cool. But after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face so you and guys like you could see it and be like, maybe I don't talk so much shit because when I cross one of these real motherfuckers, they're going to make me pay for it, man. They're going to embarrass the shit out of me. And it's not over for Ben either. He still has to deal with me. If I see him at Whole Foods, I'm going to still slap that dude up because I don't like him. And last thing for me, I know after the last fight you thought, you know, I'm going to get the title shot. You didn't. You took this one. Why now do you believe the title shot will be yours? It should have been mine, like you said, but... uh you know, I don't know. I'm not going to sell my soul, man. I know uh, they go around sometimes, you know, telling, oh, you got the title shot of you and then see who get, gives them the best deal. I want to get paid for my services. I, I think I bring a very real thing to this uh, fighting thing, and that's just baptizing people. I'm not God, but I'm, I'm putting motherfuckers in another planet when I'm done with them. Or, hey, on Thursday, you told the schmo, I'm right over here, you had the head buster the rib cage destroyer, and the kneecap defibrillator. Is it safe to say you gave Ben Askren the head buster? He got the head buster with uh, no longer with us clavicle. He got, a, he got all types of shit. Then he got those uh, punches to the face, you know, because I, I thought he was going to get up. <laughs> you said you want a title shot next. How soon do you want to get in the octagon with Kamaru Usman? It could be tomorrow. I'm ready. I, as you see, I didn't. I know they said I was in the fight. The rumors are saying that I was in a fight, but I wasn't. A fight is usually longer than five seconds, so I wasn't in a fight. No injuries. I'm ready to go tomorrow. Lastly, for me, did that go exactly how you expected it to go? Yes and no. My my whole vision of this, if you if you could get inside my head and replay my thoughts, were me beating his ass for 14 minutes and then putting him out like that. I really wanted to hurt him for as long as I could, as much as I could destroy his kneecaps, bust his ribs, make him piss blood, and then send him home packing. But, you know, he got, I think in a way he got off easy. Jorge in front. Uh, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Did you uh, see anything from what Robbie Lawler did in that fight that led you to feel like he would be vulnerable to that move tonight? It, not just the Robbie Lawler fight, his whole career. He's, he's always like, his face is a magnet to crotches. And if you want to try to touch my crotch and you're a dude, there's a heavy toll to pay, man. There's a heavy toll. This crotch ain't for dudes. And where did you uh, get the dislike for him in the first place? Was it when he came into the UFC, or was it even before that? Well, now that uh, that the fight is over, because there was a lot of he say, she say, what happened in 2008? He came to the gym, and my coach, Ricardo Laborio, told me, man, this guy's a good wrestler. Don't, don't take him lightly, you know? I kid you not. As soon as we started, I picked him up, slammed him. We scrambled back to a neutral because he could scramble his ass off. We kept going. He couldn't score a takedown. I took him down again, but this is what MMA gloves, not throwing hard, you know, just like your measuring chart. I took him down again to which he had scrambled me and stayed on top of me for like a minute and a half. Didn't submit me, wasn't my guard, but didn't pass my guard. So when he was putting these comments out there, I was like, man, this guy's a fucking idiot, bro. He has to lie to himself to get himself motivated. 
you just gave yourself away. You're a bitch, you know? If you got to be lying about shit like that, you're a bitch. But I'm at American Top Team where dozens of champions come in there throughout the weeks. You don't think I, I have stories to tell of guys that I've decapitated or, or put down with a body shot or whatnot? But I don't do that because I'm a man. And we got a code in the gym. This is what we work and we sharpen our tools and then we display them to the world. He doesn't have those ethics and guidelines. So just just from that alone, I was already like, man, he's a weirdo. And, and then on top after the wrestling practice, he came by and tried to do some corny ass joke. And it was like me, maybe Jay-Z, Cavalcante at the time, somebody else. We just looked at him like, man, you, you could just introduce yourself. You don't got to be a fucking idiot, you know. And just, since that moment, I never liked him. And lastly for me, uh, do you, you know, you have over 50 fights, as you mentioned. Do you think that you're better suited to be a champion now than you would have been when you're young because you're more mature, you've had more experience in the fight game, and you know better what it takes than maybe you did five, eight years ago when you were maybe more physically talented but not as uh, experienced? Uh, no, I'm probably more physically talented right now, man, to tell you the truth. Really? Uh, in what way? In many ways, man. I'm for, I, some of them I can't talk about them on air. But I'm fucking talented as fuck, man, physically and mentally. Poirier straight ahead. Um, Dustin Poirier tweeted uh, after your knockout that at dinner last night, uh, Mike Brown and you had talked to him about this being the game plan with the knee and that Mike Brown had even shown him video yeah. of you guys practicing that. So now that the fights happen, can you kind of tell the story of that and, you know, leading up to it, how long you guys had been contemplating this? Well, it was in the back of my pocket, like, pull it out whenever you want, George. Mike Brown is, like, very, especially with me, he kind of just lays out the game plan and do it what you want, you know. We didn't know if I was going to open up with it right right away, but we knew I was going to have it in my back pocket for sure, you know. And I, and I did want to hit him with it in the first round. I didn't know if right off the rip or a minute or two into it because mainly whether I hit him or miss, it kind of pumps the brakes on wrestlers like, whoa, if, if I shoot in, I could get my face rearranged and, and look like an idiot on TV. So I definitely wanted to put that out in the first round. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do it right off rip, but he fell for the bait so hard. I could just see how eager he was just to come forward. And so I put my hands behind my back and let him think, come, come eat. He didn't know it was going to be a buffet, though. He thought it was going to be a three-piece. Now you're getting the whole fucking MGM Grand buffet to the face, man. And uh, even if the knee had not landed perfectly, was the idea that that would probably mentally alter his game plan as far as the wrestling focus moving forward, that it would be easier to dictate the pace of the rest of the fight? Well, three, three things, three outcomes I, I thought from the knee. The first one, the second one would have been I miss, and the third one would have been I miss, and he grabs my leg and he takes me down, and we scramble right away, and he finds out I can't hold this guy down. And I was cool with all three of those scenarios and outcomes. I don't think there's a fourth one unless somebody could think of one. But those were the outcomes in my head. So I was like, man, these knees are just free for me. I'm not fighting a guy that, that intends to punch me in the face whatsoever. He's not a mean guy. He doesn't want to punch me in the face. He wants to hug my leg and put his face in my crotch. There's nothing. I can throw all the knees I want. I have nothing to worry about. Hey, Jorge, aquí, a tu izquierda. Hey, ¿cómo está? Muy bien. Eh, en primer lugar, felicitaciones por lo que has hecho. Hace un par de días te preguntaba eh, que cómo estabas, me decías que muy bien. Y además me decía que estabas muy contento porque decía que le ibas a partir la cara a un payaso y que encima te sí, iban señor. a pagar por ello, así lo dijiste. Sí, señor. Además, sí, estoy encantado de hablar en español porque de momento no, no hubo nadie que te eh, hiciera hablar en tu lengua madre. Y, ya tú oye, sabes. Ya tú sabes, brother. Eh, ¿Te imaginabas esto en el mejor de tus sueños? No en el mejor de mis sueños. En el mejor de mis sueños, eh, yo lo iba a castigar por 14 minutos y enseñarle a él que es un hombre de verdad. Y mi papá está ahí y él es testigo. Mi papá fue el que me dijo, no quiero que hagas eso, yo quiero que acabes con él rápido para que le enseñes al mundo que tú mejor eres que él. Pero yo en realidad lo quería castigar por 14 minutos. Mi papá es el testigo mío. Ese era mi mejor sueño, que yo lo castigara en 14 minutos y después lo ponía a dormir. Mm. ¿Qué es lo siguiente para ti? What is the next for you? El título. Título. El Las... título y hamburguesas. <laughs> Hamburguesa. Gracias. Jorge, over here. Yes, uh, before the fight, did you sense any kind of fear in him? Because I noticed... Yeah. The... yeah. Talk about that. Man, I had that dude spooked out. It was funny to me that he kept saying he's under my skin because I didn't go to a press conference. He was bragging about that I didn't go to a press conference. Let me tell you guys a secret. 
I could care less to be here, man. If I could be right now in and out burger and some cheeseburgers and I wouldn't get fined for missing this thing, I'd be gone. No disrespect because there's a lot of cool motherfuckers in here, bro. But I, I don't care, especially to fly across the country. I had a little bit of food poisoning and I had staff. The first one that was in Atlanta, I don't know if y'all could see this, I had a good case of staff. And I just said, I'm not going to go nowhere like this, you know. So he was bragging about that. I was like, man, I'm going to catch this dude. I seen him one day in the hallways. We were taking pictures, and I just jumped up on him. And right away, I could see how nervous he was. He's a deer in lights, stiff meister, you know. Similar how he ended up tonight, stiff as a fucking board. It's the same way he was every time I seen him, man. So I got no respect for him because if you could talk that shit like this, you got to be able to do it in the FaceTime. If not, shut the fuck up, man. Because we don't even know if it's you the one typing, man. It's just fucking, he just throws shit on the wall and hopes that it sticks, you know. It's obvious that you guys don't really love each other, but is there a chance that maybe one day you guys could drop the beef, or do you think it's is, is this a permanent thing? Oh, no, it's not beef, because if it was beef, it'd be different. I'd be at the front of his house waiting for him right now. It's not beef. This is just, I don't like some my co-worker, we could say, but this is not beef, you know. This is just some idiot I don't like, you know. But my job, thank God, I'm, you guys got to be jealous of, of this for me. I get to punch the co-workers I don't like in the face. <laughs> Thank you, man. You got it. Hey, George, right over here to your left. What's up, man? Uh, Algerman Santos, Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, I don't think there's any kind of slow motion camera that can capture that, those, if they could, capture those five seconds. Where in those five seconds did you know that you had it in the bag? Blah. <laughs> as soon as that dude signed the contract, man. <laughs> I, as soon as I, he was acting like he wanted to come forward and I put my hands behind my back and like signal to him and he was like yeah for sure I'm putting my face in your crotch I was like alright I got you bro for sure I got you bro you're such a fucking fish man appreciate it thank you you got it Jorge right here uh, what did Dana say to you in the octagon after the finish be nice to him <laughs> that's what I remember I don't know I'm sure you said a couple other things you know but he was just like be, be nice to Ben be, be nice to him now you know because I, I was telling him like, why'd you put me to fight with this guy because I I believe, and a lot of the media also believed it. Not a lot, but some of the media, that this was a step back for me. I've been fighting fucking... I, I fought Eve Edwards over 10 years ago, but that guy's a fucking fighter. That guy's a stud, bro. You guys might not know who Eve Edwards is. If you don't, shame on you. Go do some research. I've been fighting badasses for a long time. To get put in with this guy was was a setback in a way, you know. I'm glad, though. I'm going to steal that fucking hype and go fight for my title now because they were saying this is the greatest grappler ever. I think Joe Rogan said it's like grappling two guys... All the media was behind this guy. He's, what, uh, fucking 38-0 and 0 or whatever the fucking bullshit record he has, you know? So he's obviously something in, in the grappling community. But to me, as far as fighting goes, he doesn't rank in my top 10 victories. And then at Media Day, I brought up the fact that Dana said he wanted to build a PI in Puerto Rico, and you said... I'm gone. Yeah, and you said... I'm I gone. I'm gone. Puerto Rico, here I go. Did you talk to Dana about that? You said you wanted to meet him. Nah, with him. Dana, Dana ain't talked to me about that. He might be a little mad I did his boy Ben like that, man. I know those two are real close. What what happens what happens if Colby wins next month? How do you determine who who gets the title shot? What how do, how do you figure that out? I don't know who who if that's Dana, if that's Hunter, if that's Sean Shelby. I I don't know of them who does it, but I think my body of work speaks for itself. If you want sheer violence, you know who to call. If you want other shit, man, fucking guys going to press conferences on time and posting on their shit, then you know who to call, man. But if you want somebody who's going to give you this fucking violence, you know who to call. All right, guys. The attendance was 18358 It was a sellout. $6.06 .06 million gate. The performance of the night went to Masvidal, Nunez, Jan, and Yadong. They all won $50,000. Congratulations. Who's got the first question? Dana, quick on uh, Ben Askren. Have you gotten any medical Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I should have jumped into that, too. Uh, he's good. All of his stuff came back negative, so he's okay. Cool. I'm sure he's not okay, but he's, you know. Nah. <laughs> Good enough. Yeah, exactly. No question. Listen, before we get to tonight's fights, there was one uh, outside the cage. There was a, a lot of commotion uh, before Gilbert Melendez's fight, Nate Diaz out there in the crowd. Do you know exactly what happened? We, we couldn't see exactly from yeah, where we were. They got into a fight, Khabib and, and, and Diaz. 
talking shit to each other back and forth, and everybody, you know, broke it up. We moved Diaz, and then Diaz left after the Melendez fight. Which is verbal, or was there physical? Verbal, no, verbal. Okay, fair enough. I appreciate that. It, everybody got it before it became anything other than verbal. Cool. Let's get your thoughts on the main event. I mean, uh, maybe not the rousing finish you wanted, but another another win for John Jones. I mean, what did, what, what did you think about the fight itself? Yeah, listen, in a night where there's record-breaking knockouts, you know, knocking out people that have never been knocked out in MMA before and, and things like that, you know, I think the fans have that, you know, you know how it is. The fans want to see all the, the crazy shit. But when you have two guys with everything on the line, when one of the most coveted titles in the sport, the light heavyweight title has been one of the most important titles in the sport forever. These guys are fighting a hard fight, busting each other up. Um, you know, it's not the most popular way to win, but he won the fight. It's a fight that you openly said you had wanted to see, and then you get this close result, you know, split decision. Is it a fight you want to see again? No. I, I, I had John Jones winning that thing easily. When I heard it was a split decision, I was like, what the? That's nuts. So, yeah, I, I, he, he won the fight. The thing you got to understand, too, is when, when, when you're somebody – like John, who, you know, he's fought all, name the names in the light heavyweight division. He's fought them all, he's beat them all. He's had, we'll call it a hard life outside the octagon. And he continue, he comes back and continues to beat guys the way that he beat DC. Um, you know, he beat Smith. You know, he, he just wins this fight against a, a very tough, durable, strong, powerful guy who came to win. Um, it's a win, man. And these guys now that he's starting to face are younger than him, have been, have been, have been kinder, kinder to themselves outside the octagon than he has been. You know, th this, is the, this is now in this stage of his career is what's really going to define him as, as the greatest. I want to ask you about Amanda Nunes, another incredible performance by her tonight. Uh, you know, the, the storyline kind of coming in was this is the last big star that she needed to beat, right? So she, she wins that way. Where do you go with her? I mean, is there anybody that, that makes sense for her to fight at 135, 145? What's next for her? What does this remind you of? Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, John Jones. You know, that's, the, that's where she's at now. Um, you know, she wants the cyborg rematch. And, uh, you know... We're, we're down to make the Cyborg rematch. So, um, you know, Cyborg always thinks that I'm being whatever to her, whatever. I'm not. I, I, if Cyborg, I don't blame Cyborg for not wanting this fight. I don't blame her. I'm not trying to say anything about her. If she doesn't want it. That's fine. There's always somebody else. That, you know, she's got both belts and she's willing to defend them both. And she's healthy. You know, you hear these people. It's like you guys were asking me a million times leading into the Cejudo fight and other fights that we've done this with, you know, ah, what, what, what if they have both belts, they can't defend them, and I'll go in and I'll say they got to give up one belt, we gave them the opportunity, we thought they could do it, this woman, so even when you look at Zahudo, and again, he'll be fucking calling me in 20 minutes, bitching at me about this one, but, you know, it's like, Zahudo fought up a higher weight class, and, and I mean, I told you guys that night, what he did in that second round, what he came back from was unbelievable, and I'm like, I'm going to give it. But he got hurt in that fight. He's out now. He fought a big, strong kid, and now he's hurt. She's not hurt. You know what I mean? She's fighting all the best in the world, destroying them, and she's not hurt. She can tell. I just saw her skipping down the, you know, the hallway in the background when I was walking here. She's, like, in the best mood. You know, this woman is tough, man. She's unbelievable. Pound for pound, one of the greatest of all time. So... But there will be somebody next. If Cyborg doesn't want the fight, then there's somebody next. Dana, the last one I want to ask you about was Diego Sanchez. A lot of that fight took place right in front of you. Um, the corner work took place right in front of you. I just wonder kind of what your thoughts are on, on what happened with Diego tonight and, and on his future. I mean, I know you've always had a soft spot for him. but no, I love Diego Sanchez. I love everything about Diego Sanchez. And, you know, that kid is – when you talk about somebody who was put on this earth to fight, it's what this kid was born to do. He loves it so much. And, uh, and you saw tonight the way that he was treated by the fans. The fans love this guy. And he fought, you know, Kiesa's going to be scary at that way, man. He was huge. 
huge. And every time Diego tried to grapple with him, he couldn't. You know, he was overpowered. And uh, Chiesa fought a good fight. Diego's, I, you know, like 14 years, 15 years, this guy's been in the UFC. It's amazing. You think he should keep going? Listen, he, he's, he's not getting, you know, it's not like he got viciously knocked out. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give you an example. Like, I think Luke Rockhold should talk about hanging it up. You know, he broke his jaw tonight. So that's the second broken jaw. He's been knocked out viciously a few times here. Shin is all banged up. He had to have uh, 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 skin graft and all kinds of stuff. Just he's had a good career. He's been a great fighter. I'd like to I'd like to see him hang it up. And he's got another he's got another career that he's actually doing well at. It's not like he's like everybody's a fucking model, right? I'm a model. I'm a model. That guy's actually really modeling for Ralph Lauren. So. Um, Good for him. Dana, getting back to uh, Diego Sanchez, uh, before the fight, he made it sound like he really needed to have a really good showing because he was at the end of his deal. You guys plan on keeping I mean, you just said that you like having him around. You guys obviously plan on keeping him around, or? Yeah. Uh, how old is Diego now? I don't even know. I believe he's, what, 37, I think? 37. Yeah. yeah, this is one of those conversations where, you know, Diego's – not getting viciously knocked out and everything else, but fighting is a young man's game. It's it's for young people, man. It's once you start to get older, you know, Father Time is undefeated. He kicks all of our asses, and and you know, especially professional athletes. I care about the kid. I love the kid. So, you know, we we need to have a serious conversation about what's next. And he doesn't have to have a great performance because it's the end of it. Diego Sanchez has helped build this this sport you know just as much as any he's one of the one of the, the, the ultimate fighter one guys which you know how i feel about all those guys so um he's in no f risk or fear of anything you know i would i would do anything for diego so and and, and uh, holly Holm, as far as her losing this time is it going to be harder for her to get another championship opportunity? What, is, what does it do for her because the fight went that way? Um, yeah, listen, I, I don't want to start going retirement crazy in here, but, uh, you know, she's had an amazing career. She is one of the sweetest human beings you can ever meet. And if you follow her on Instagram, she trains like a beast, you know, She's almost 40 years old, and she's in, in ridiculous shape. The things that this woman can do physically with, like, the rings and, you know, gymnastics and, uh, and all that stuff is phenomenal. She's an incredible athlete. She's an incredible human being. Um, I don't know. I, I think that she needs to take a look at, you know, what's next for her and, and, and what she thinks. I just, and I'm just saying that because I care about her. I care about her as a person. She's amazing. So, I don't know. It's something, something we should probably talk about. Thanks, Dana. Yeah. Dana, you said uh, about Diego, he was a guy put on this earth to fight. That's what he's born to do. I think there was another guy that, that same way, Jorge Masvidal. What was your uh, take on what he did? Yeah, that, that dude's a killer, man. He, he is uh, – <laughs> what a brilliant – what a brilliant plan – Execution. I mean, everything of that flying knee was 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 brilliant. If if you're going into a fight with Ben Askren, you can 99.9% .9 predict that he's going to try to take you down right out the gate, and that's that's what he thought. He set up the flying knee perfectly. He landed it perfectly, and uh, it, it was super impressive. Do you think he, uh, given the way he's won these last couple of fights, he deserves the title shot against Usman? <laughs> <clears throat> First of all, Usman isn't even healthy right now. This guy's still I don't I don't know when he's gonna be cleared to fight. When he gets into camp, how how does his training camp start going once he starts from so I can't I can't even talk about who's next with all that stuff. If Askren won tonight, it'd be what do you think of Askren? Is he next? Uh, you know. We'll see what happens. When you look at Masvidal, I mean He's a guy that struggled kind of when he first came to the UFC, lost more than he won for a, a period of time, and, and now he looks so dominant and so strong. 
and he's such a great talker. I mean, he seems to be a guy that if you get him a title shot, he could, you know, really become a star for you. Uh, how do you have you ever seen a guy kind of had that kind of mid career turnaround like he's had, where struggling and now all of a sudden become such a big factor? So what's weird is with with Masvidal's. When I first saw Masvidal, I said, "Man, this guy is so talented." But it was almost like his head wasn't really into it. It's not until recently that this guy started getting serious about fighting. And when he did, holy shit. Yeah, it's impressive. Was there anything that you know of? Like, did you have a conversation? Dude, you're not into this? Or no. was it just something he did on his own? Yeah, he just did it on his own. Okay. It all just started to turn around. Sure. And then uh, just one, one last thing. When you look at him... Um, where he's at right now in his career. Do you think he has another another level even to get to? I mean, just two fights ago, he lost to Wonder Boy, right? I mean, so it seems like he maybe even could get better than he is right now the, on the progression he's at. Yeah, I mean, that that's up to him. It depends on how serious he's taking it, how hard he's working and training. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy obviously has the potential to be incredible. And, you know, he's, he's just... Uh, He's unique. <laughs> He's unique. He's that dude's a fighter. That guy is a guy that, if he wasn't doing this for a living, he'd be doing this anyways, somewhere else, illegally probably. Dana, over here, to your right. Hi. Hi there. So John Jones had a very tactical fight tonight, and I think a lot of people expected him to be more aggressive. Do you think that he gets enough credit for being such an intelligent fighter? Um, like I said earlier, you know, th this is his style tonight is a very, not a very fan friendly style, especially with the craziness that went on tonight. But yeah, at the end of the day, you have to respect the way he fought the guy he fought, who is very powerful and has been undefeated since moving to this weight hits hard. Um, but John kept pressing forward. He was the one moving forward all night and, uh, and, uh, you know, he fought a smart fight. He fought the fight that he needed to fight to to beat him. Yeah, and, and finally, you mentioned Amanda Nunez uh, in, in a list of some of the greatest fighters of all times, not just as a, a great female fighter. Have you talked with her about giving her any kind of special or boosted uh, marketing push to get her out there and really sell her and not just her fights? Yeah, well, we do. I mean, we do that. We have a team that, you know, goes out and does tons of PR um, with these guys when they're not fighting. And, and, and we've done that with her. But with some people, it, it, it just takes a little longer. Some people, it, you know, it's funny saying it now, but nobody cared about Chuck Liddell when Chuck Liddell, it wasn't until he knocked out Tito that the whole thing blew up and went crazy with Chuck Liddell. Anderson Silva, I mean, I, I remember having conversations with Ioli back in the day about how many times this guy won and, you know, the things that he was doing, and he didn't really become a star. It, it doesn't, it, you know, then Ronda Rousey bursts onto the scene and becomes the biggest thing ever, Con Conor McGregor. Because it just, it's different with different people and it takes different time. But let me tell you this. So tonight, the, the, there was almost 19,000 people here. We did a $6.06 .06 million gate. And when I tell you the numbers for this thing are all off the charts, I mean, the numbers tonight were massive for this event in every way. Even we did a fucking 50-50 raffle, and the numbers are insane. Did like $100,000 with the 50-50 raffle, right? So all the numbers are big, and Amanda Nunes is the co-main event. She's a part of that. So, you know, when I, when I hear people talk about, oh, well, this one isn't a star, that idiot. What's the idiot's name? What's the idiot? I'll give him more fucking PR here. What's his name? Yeah. Ravel, okay? Guy's out running 40-yard dashes and shit. This guy likes fucking attention, okay? This guy likes attention, and I'm going to give him more attention. You know, he says, uh, the worst thing that could have ever happened tonight is Amanda Nunes won. She's not a star for the UFC. So th this is the type of stupid shit. That, that we hear, Amanda Nunes is a star. And if, if I, I, I wouldn't say that b before tonight, man, what is that? Are the planes landing here? This is crazy. The, so I, I wouldn't say tonight that everybody believed, like everybody believed that Amanda was, you know, the best and all this other stuff. But now it's you just get to a point where you can't deny anymore. Even if you're a hater and you're denying and, um, and so many people love Holly. 
they love Holly, you know? And uh, you can't deny anymore. Amanda Nunes is the shit. Dana, uh, last month you said you had a ground for the PIE in Mexico. Are there any chances that uh, for the Mexico event uh, in September you'll be breaking ground or having any event? Maybe. Or like yeah, that? maybe. I actually have a meeting this week. Those guys are going to walk me through everything that's going on with, you know, the land and um, what we're thinking and what's going to happen next. So you will be in Mexico this week? Mexico? Yeah. 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 This is crazy. Yeah. Has this been going on all night? Or just when I sat down. Any more questions? Uh, just yeah. one, one last. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you going to Uruguay with uh, Valentina uh, defending the belt? Are any chances to come back to Mexico anytime soon? Because it's been four years now. It's going to be five years next year. Not having a championship fight in Mexico City. I, I don't know. I, listen, I. When you go into these different markets, uh, you, you know. Again, I'll use Australia as a, as a perfect example. Look how long we've been doing fights in Australia. We finally built up that market to a point where it absolutely makes sense to, uh, to bring a title fight there, especially if there's an Australian who holds the belt and, uh, and, and a champion from New Zealand. So we'll, we'll see how that market plays out, and we'll go from there. Dana, right over here. Hey. Um, I understand you said that Usman isn't healthy, but Colby Covington sees himself as a champion and has that fight against Robbie Lawler coming up. Regardless how, how that fight plays out, um, is Jorge Masvidal next in line for the title shot, though? No, nobody is. There's nobody in line right now. When, when Usman is healthy, when Usman is healthy and we know that he can fight, we'll figure out what's next. Thank you. Dana, hi, mate. How are you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, rather than moving it forwards, um, you've been to a lot of UFC events over your time, yeah? Yep. Pretty much all of them. Yep. Even in the crowd in the first couple. Right. Yeah. Is that one of the most dramatic nights you have ever witnessed in the history of the UFC? Yeah, it was awesome. I, I love when, when um, big cards that have a lot of hype behind them deliver. You know, and this one definitely had hype. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys felt it, but we felt it. This thing was tracking huge on pay-per-view, um, you know, and they just had the buzz and the energy behind it. And, and think about this. It had Francis and Ganyu and, Dos, uh, you know, Dos Santos on it, right? And then uh, uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley was on the card, and the card took a couple of hits and still just was such a stacked card. It... it uh, it was big. Well, I wanted to ask you yesterday at the press conference, but I didn't want to jinx it because of the jinxes in the last three years, if you recall, on this particular event with Amanda, with Max Holloway, with John Jones and so on. Right. Um, John Jones tonight, you haven't said it yet, but he could have taken the guy down. He yeah. went into Santos's backyard. He had the left hook cocked all night for the surprise knockout. Isn't Jones incredible that he wants to fight everyone else with their tools to prove how good he is. I, I wouldn't say that he, that he fought with, with his tools. You know, obviously Santos cracks. You know, he hits hard and he's a powerful guy. But John Jones does too. I mean, John Jones has those nasty spinning elbows. He throws elbows on the inside like their hands. Uh, he hits hard, kicks hard. I mean, he knocked, he knocked Cormier out with a head kick. Um, He's a very well-rounded guy, too. And then finally, on Amanda, do you think she's one of the greatest of all time? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in answer to your question, if people aren't shaking with adrenaline tonight, they haven't watched the event properly. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you. You guys good with me? Yeah. Was Masvidal's knockout? The best the, oh, yeah. I, fuck. What's that? Aldo and Cubs Who was it? Aldo. Aldo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, listen, we could probably, if you, if you looked back and saw some of the knockouts that have happened, there's some nasty ones. But that one, not only how it landed, how we went down, but 
how many times he tried to get up and couldn't get up. And, yeah, that, that was vicious. And I bet if you talk to him, he remembers nothing about leaving the octagon or God knows when, when he starts remembering again, you know, things that he remembers after. The, probably wasn't until he was in the ambulance or, or something like that. Yeah, that was one of the most vicious knockouts I've ever seen. Cool? Thank you guys so much. Have a good weekend. Tiago, I know you're disappointed right now at the result. It was very clear that you were injured throughout the fight. I guess, can you tell us kind of what your physical status is now and how that injury exactly was affecting you as the fight was unfolding? Tiago, a gente sabe que você deve estar um pouquinho desapontado agora, mas queríamos saber como é que está, qual foi a lesão que você teve e o que aconteceu com você. É, no primeiro round ali, é, meu joelho é, saiu do lugar ali, eu não, não sei muito bem explicar o que aconteceu, mas foi logo ali no primeiro round, não foi nenhum golpe dele não, eu, eu, eu mesmo pisei, não sei explicar o que aconteceu. É, e aí foi isso, que vocês puderam ver durante a luta, é, me atrapalhou um pouco durante a luta, é, mas eu tentei fazer... Fiz tudo o que eu pude nas condições que eu estava. Então, deixei tudo lá dentro e, e é isso. You know, everybody saw I, in the first round it wasn't anything that John Jones said to me. I felt the knee go out and, you know, it, it really bothered my fight. Everybody saw I did everything I could fighting on a bum knee and I fought the whole fight like that. A lot of times when people fight John Jones, they, they come back afterwards and say he was, he was better here, he was different than I expected, it was, it was different than I thought. How did things play out versus your expectations tonight? Muitas vezes as pessoas lutam com John Jones falam que foi diferente do que eles estavam esperando. O que você achou? Não, a luta estava do jeito que a gente treinou, estava boa, é, eu estava enxergando tudo, todos os golpes dele, eu estava bem consciente durante a luta. É, realmente o joelho é, me atrapalhou a, os meus ataques, né? Então, é, mas é, não, não foi surpresa, foi exatamente o que eu treinei, é, foi o que aconteceu. Não, you know, everything happened like we thought it would, like I trained for it, I was seeing everything. The knee really got in my way, but I didn't see anything. There wasn't anything happening that we weren't ready for, I wasn't trained for, I wasn't seeing. Last for me, you certainly uh, deserve credit for your effort tonight, but you know, when you lined up for the judge's decision, they start reading out a split decision. I mean, did you think you had done enough to win the fight? Did, did you think you were going to walk away with the title? Bom, e depois de lá na hora da decisão do, dos juízes, eles acabaram de, dando uma decisão dividida. Você achou que você tinha feito bastante para ganhar a luta? Eu achei que a luta foi bem apertada. Eu achei até que eu, eu atingi mais ele do que ele me atingiu. Mas, é, não sei, é, no final ali eu estava muito desapontado pelo, pelo, pelo que aconteceu com o meu joelho e eu não pude dar 100%. Então, é, enfim, é, é isso. Eu pensei que eu hit mais, eu apontei mais, eu apontei ele. Mas, com o meu joelho assim, é o mesmo que eu posso fazer. Eu sei que foi uma luta muito difícil, mas eu sei que foi uma luta muito Tiago, when you uh, hurt the knee, when you came down and you hurt the knee, he seemed to notice that and he went right after you. And you landed a combination. Do you think you hurt him in that combination? You landed right after you injured the knee. You kind of pushed him back. Na hora que você machucou o joelho, ele veio para cima de você. Você acertou ele com a combinação. Você achou que machucou ele naquele momento? É difícil lembrar assim muita coisa da luta, né? Foram cinco rounds. É, mas eu lembro que eu machuquei ele muito com meus chutes, ó, nas pernas, no joelho dele também. Algumas vezes minha, minha, minha mão conectou, mas, 
mas não chegou a entrar como eu queria. É, a, minha, a minha progressão, que a gente treinou tanto, que era avançando, com meu joelho ruim, é, impediu que eu fizesse isso. Então, eu não conseguia progredir muito. Toda vez que eu, que eu atacava progredindo, meu joelho é, falhava e eu caía. Por duas ou três vezes eu caí, tentando atacar ele por causa do meu joelho. É difícil lembrar em um fight round fight. But you know, I, I managed to hurt him more. I managed to kick him a lot. But our plan was to progress when we started attacks, and I couldn't really do that the way my knee was. I wasn't managing to to put my hands and, and hit my strikes the way I wanted to. And uh, did you hurt your right leg at all during the fight? It seemed like at one point you came down, and your right leg seemed to wobble on you a little bit. Yeah, perna direita. Você machucou a perna direita em algum momento? No, I don't know. Apenas meu joelho esquerdo. A perna direita normal de chute, é, é natural que eu saia um pouco machucado, porque quando eu chuto, às vezes, pega canela com canela, pega no joelho, então, mas é normal. O, o machucado mesmo era na, no joelho esquerdo. Não, um, my right, it was my left knee. My right leg is a little bit banged up because of the kicks that hit the shin, you know, it's bone on bone, so it gets a little banged up, but it's not really anything. And last thing, were you surprised at all he didn't try to take you down given what was going on with your leg? Você ficou surpreso que não te botou para baixo, não tentou te botar para baixo é, com a com a sua lesão na perna? É, assim, eu acho que ele não estava seguro de tentar porque eu estava o tempo todo fintando o joelho, fintando o uppercut também. Então, eu estava fintando bastante, porque eu estava ouvindo os cornes dele falar para ele aplicar o takedown. E, então, eu estava fintando muito o joelho e tal. Então, eu, a minha movimentação também, eu acho que dificultou. Não, eu acho que eu estava ouvindo o corner e eu estava fazendo com o pé. E eu acho que ele não se sentiu segurança para ir para lá, sabe? Então, eu acho que o meu pé, o meu pensamento, o meu pensamento, me fez difícil para ele conseguir o takedown. Eh, Tiago, aquí, a tu, a tu izquierda, aquí. Eh, primero en español, first in Spanish and then in, in English. Eh, tú me dijiste que eh, tú impactarías al mundo, que sorprenderías al mundo, pero al final no pudo ser. You said me, uh, you will shock at the world, and what happened? Você falou que chocaría el mundo y no aconteceu. O que, que aconteceu? Aconteceu o que você viu. Não tem muito o que falar, pô. Eu fiz o que eu pude nas condições que eu tava. É uma luta. A gente não tem 100% de certeza que vai ganhar. Mas eu estou satisfeito. Eu deixei tudo lá dentro, mesmo com o joelho machucado, desde o primeiro round. Eu fiz quatro rounds apenas numa base na base de canhoto, sem poder me movimentar como geralmente eu me movimento, sem poder aplicar meus golpes como geralmente eu aplico. E é isso. É, eu não choquei o mundo pelas circunstâncias, mas é, não foi não foi demérito nenhum. Entendeu? Tô, é, nas condições que eu estava, fiz o que eu pude e estou satisfeito. Eu acho que você viu. I mean, you know, you can never be certain of what's going to happen when you get into a fight. I fought four, four rounds with a bad knee, and I still fought, and I still moved forward, and, you know, that, that's the way it happened. I thought, I, I'm satisfied with what I did. In the condition I was in, I thought I put on a good fight. Marreta? Uh, falando de novo da marcação dos juízes na luta, né? Uh, você se lembra a conversa com seus corners, com seus treinadores, em que round, se eles chegaram a mencionar, você ganhou esse round, como estava a pontuação, você teve o controle da luta, você lembra de que round você estava ganhando? Espera aí, espera aí, deixa eu ver primeiro. Ok, então o que ele está perguntando é se o Thiago se lembra, entre os rounds, o que os corners estavam dizendo, se ele ganhou o round ou se ele perdeu o round. A luta foi muito... Muito parelho, acho que não teve um round tão convincente assim. Então, a gente estava muito na dúvida. Então, eu sempre voltava achando que eu tinha perdido o round. Na dúvida, para mim, eu perdi. Então, eu sempre 
tentava voltar fazer, fazendo mais. Né? É, nenhum round assim eu tinha a convicção e a certeza de que tinha ganho. Em nenhum dos rounds, eu estava convencido que eu tinha ganho. E quando em dúvida, você vai como se você estivesse perdendo. E é isso que eu tentei fazer. Eu não estava muito certo. E quando em dúvida, eu só me passei para frente. Certo. Tiveram dois momentos na luta que eu, pelo menos, tive a impressão que você sofreu um knockdown. No segundo e no terceiro round. Uh, isso de, você chegou, de fato, foi knockdown, chegou a ficar, não sei, perto de ser nocauteado? Como você lembra desse momento? Foi um, um chute alto e uma cotovelada giratória, se não me engano. Houve dois momentos em que eu pensei que você tinha um knockdown na luta. Um foi em uma mão e o outro foi em um kick. Você estava, em algum momento, estunado por esses strikes? Não, não me recordo de ter tomado nenhum, nenhum knockdown, não. Me atingiu, realmente, com, com golpes limpos, golpe forte, mas fiquei um pouco tonto ali, mas não, não, não se caracteriza knockdown. Não, eu não me senti que eu tinha ganhado. Houve alguns golpes difíceis, eu me senti um pouco, mas eu não acho que eu tinha ganhado. Eu não me lembro de ter sido ganhado em algum momento no jogo. Ok, minha última pergunta, então, Thiago. É, Passados cinco rounds de basicamente de trocação, nenhum né? momento de luta no chão, né? Passado cinco rounds de luta com John Jones, uh, muita gente fala que ele é imbatível, né? Uh, você que teve essa experiência hoje, você, como você analisa ele como adversário e você consegue essa resposta dizer ele de fato não é imbatível, é possível vencer o John Jones? After five rounds fighting John Jones, which is more of a striking match, it never went to the ground. People say that John Jones is unbeatable. Um, what do you think? Do you feel that? É, eu continuo achando como o, o, o que eu achava é, antes de lutar com ele, que ele é um ser humano, é um homem como, como outro qualquer, sente dor, sangra, acusa os golpes também. E é isso, eu acho que não existe ninguém invencível. Eu, eu tive muito, muito, muitos bons momentos na luta e eu acho que eu pude provar hoje que, que, que ele não é invencível, que, que é possível se fazer isso. Eu mudo da mesma opinião que eu was when I went in the fight, that he's a man like any any other man, and he feels, he bleeds, he feels the strikes. I had good moments in the fight, too, so I think, no, he's not unbeatable. You know, he's, he's a man like, just like any other one. Tiago, first, uh, very impressive performance. You went out there to fight somebody who is considered the best of all time. Can you describe what your day was like from the time you woke up today to before you walked out? For such a challenge. Bom, você subiu, acordou de manhã com o desafio de lutar com um dos melhores lutadores de todo o tempo. Você pode descrever como que foi seu dia da hora que você acordou até a hora de se subir no octágono? É diferente, né? É uma disputa de cinturão contra um cara é, com o nome do, John, do Jones. É, realmente são áreas diferentes. Né? Existe uma pressão, não, não, não tem como negar. Mas foi maravilhoso, foi bom viver tudo isso, essa experiência nova para mim. É... Feliz em ter, em ter chegado onde eu cheguei, em disputar o cinturão, em fazer cinco rounds, é... quando muita gente é, dizia que eu não passaria do, do segundo round. Até o próprio Jones falou isso, que se, se passasse do segundo round eu não aguentaria. E é... eu pude provar o contrário. Então, eu estou muito feliz. You know, you get up in the morning, you know you're fighting for the belt against one of the best on earth. It's it's a pretty, pretty indescribable feeling. But at the end of the day, you know, people thought that I wouldn't last, go past the second round. John Jones thought that, and I did. So I'm pretty happy with myself. I think that given everything that happened, I'm happy to have come out here and fought for this title and put on the fight I've put on. Tiago. Uh, Algerman Santos Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, John Jones commended you on your on your your level of Muay Thai being a black belt. Um, how would you say John Jones measured up to your standard of Muay Thai? John Jones te elogiou pelo seu nível de Muay Thai sendo um faixa preta. O que que você acha do Muay Thai dele? Pô, é inquestionável. Jones é é um talento. É... É um cara muito inteligente, um cara incrível. É... Tentou contro controlar a luta o tempo todo. É, é um grande campeão, não tenho, não tenho o que falar. É um cara que 
eu assisti as lutas dele, eu, eu tenho respeito por ele, sempre, sempre falei isso, ah, é um grande lutador, e não foi o resultado que eu esperava, mas, é, como eu falei, estou feliz pelo, pela oportunidade, por ele ter aceitado me dar a oportunidade de, de, de lutar contra ele, e espero, espero encontrá-lo novamente. You know, John Jones is unquestionably a great fighter, a very intelligent fighter, always managed to, he's always intelligent in there, you know, and it wasn't, the result wasn't exactly the way I wanted to, but I'm still happy that I went out there and put on a fight and put on a five round fight against who is unquestionably one of the best fights, fighters in the world. Well, Amanda, another big win for you. Uh, you got the new belt that you wanted. You got, you know, more history being made every time you fight. Tell me what this win tonight means to you. Means a lot. You know, like I said, my whole interview this weekend, this is about keep making history. Keep proving I mean, better than all those girls in my division. Once again tonight, I prove it. You were kind of feeling each other out a little bit back and forth early, and then right before that finishing sequence, you, you kind of smiled a little bit in there, it looked like. Do you remember what was going through your head? Did you think, I've, I've got this figured out? Because she showed up different tonight. I thought Holly's going to move a lot. I thought she's going to in and out, run a little bit, try to clinch me. But she showed up like she stays still there. And like I have to like do something else. Like, I have to do plan B, because my first will always chase her. And she, like, kind of show up different. And it was better for me how she show up tonight. It was a little hard to hear for us uh, in the cage. You said the high kick you in the locker room, you just decided, like, you had this vision or you had this desire? You saw it? Well, explain that. Honestly, me and my coach, Katel, we've been doing this for so long. And... In, in the, um, actually was this weekend, I was in the, in the hotel room, me and Nina like, started like practices, like hook, straight, and finish with the leg kick, because I knew she's gonna run that way. And every time before we, I sleep, like we always doing over and over, so like, Mai's gonna, I might gonna catch her with this one, I'm gonna, doing this and, you know, like I have the best coach in the world and we do this over and over with something that I, that I have the whole time. I know I don't have a chance to show yet, but tonight was a good night to show. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, no doubt. I know you want to enjoy tonight, but it's interesting. <laughs> next week, the Random A versus Ladd at 135. Next, a few weeks later, Cyborg and Spencer at 145. Are, are you looking at those two fights? Is that kind of your, your plan, is to check those out as, as number one contender fights? What's, what's the plan for you? Yeah, definitely I'm going to be watching, you know? This is possible 
can be my, my next opponent. And we'll see what's going to happen Me on all those girls. Amanda, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Was it, did you get a little fired up when you saw Masvidal, what he did, and you're coming out after that? I did. <laughs> he opened up for us. I always, when I saw that, the energy was to the roof. I'm going to go and I do the same. And I did. It was awesome. Those kicks that she was giving you to the knee, they were, seemed like giving you a little bit of trouble for a while in the beginning. And then what was the adjustment you made to kind of get away? Actually, I think the biggest problem with Holly tonight, she can't find her time with me. Not even those kicks will always be able to stop me because she don't have the right time to throw those kicks. And she was just throw that, you know, without meaning. And yeah, that's it. Don't hurt me at all. Actually, if she keep doing that, I would do something else because I start catch all the times that I needed to like really finish that fight. And you also landed a right hand. Do you remember that right hand, the straight right hand you landed? And it seemed like maybe that changed how she approached you as well. Do you, did that right hand, do you think, hurt her at all? I feel like my, my front kick was the, the big thing. When I, I landed that, that front kick, I saw her. She don't wanna do. She don't wanna that thing again, and I start to work with my hand because I I knew my next step would land again the same spot, and happen two or three more times, and she was really was hurting her, her belly, and after I connect, my right hand is like she got really worried about it, and I saw everything after that. Amanda, tudo bem? Escolhe. Uau. Amanda, é, a gente, você conversou com a mídia brasileira na terça-feira, né? fez um hangout com a gente. E eu te perguntei sobre se, se o UFC tinha te oferecido uma luta com a Chris Cibori. E você me disse, é, na coletiva de imprensa, é, eu vou vencer a luta e na coletiva eu te respondo. Eu não vou te responder isso sim, agora. Sim, ele ofereceu, sim. É, como foi essa negociação? Uh, por que, que a luta não... Ah, ele falou para mim, tem a luta com a Cris, logo depois com a, da luta com a Holly. Você aceita? Eu falei, aceito. E no, no dia seguinte, quando eu fui na social media, é, she's, she, she, ela, ela assinou pra, com outra luta, eu não entendi nada. Então, não sei onde é que está o erro aí, não sei quem, qual foi a negociação entre eles. Mas eles me ofereceram a luta, sim. No dia seguinte, ela já estava com uma outra luta. Não entendi nada. Tá. Bom, minha outra pergunta, Amanda. Você venceu a Ciborgue, a Misha, a Holly, a Germania e a Ronda, que são cinco ex-campeãs do UFC, todas elas no primeiro round. E você muito tem se falado sobre o seu legado, você, você clama que é a melhor lutadora de todos os tempos do UFC. O Eu Dana, sou. O Deran hoje, inclusive, disse que você é uma dos... Incluindo com os homens, nível de Anderson Silva, Sam Pierre, enfim... Uh, de olho nisso, que tipo de próximo degrau você pode ter em rumo a só... Posso assumir que a Valentina, sendo a única que você só venceu por pontos, possa ser o seu próximo degrau? Ah, pra... velho, ela teve duas, duas chances para ganhar para mim. Nenhuma das duas ela provou nada, que era melhor que eu. Você assistiu a luta? As duas. Então, eu acho que já passou. Vamos ver o nosso, nosso próximo passo daqui para frente. Eu acho que eu provei duas vezes que eu sou melhor que ela. Tudo bem, aquela luta talvez eu queria ir para cinco rounds, por que não? É obrigado eu finalizar a luta? Todas? Não, eu posso, através daquela luta, é, trazer alguma coisa, acrescentar alguma coisa no meu, no meu game plano. E aquela luta com a Valentina, realmente eu queria isso. Eu queria ir cinco rounds com a menina dura e cheguei lá para provar mais uma vez que eu chego aos cinco rounds com uma pessoa duríssima e ganhei a luta, as duas lutas. Foi assistidas várias vezes por mim e os meus coaches e eu ganhei todas as duas lutas, sem dúvida nenhuma. Então, se eu te perguntar qual seria o... Ah, óbvio que você acabou de vencer uma luta, enfim, mas qual seria o próximo degrau? Tomar uma cerveja e relaxar, e depois eu vejo isso aí. Tá ok. <risos> Obrigada, viu? Amanda, hi. Uh, Algeman Santos, from Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, I wanted to commend you on a great fight. Um, Thank you. And you've got quite a list of people that you've gone through to be where you're at right now, and... And there's not a lot of people that can say that. Um, what message would you like to send to women in the sport or women in general um, uh, after your great performance tonight? 
Honestly, I'm very happy with my life. Um, I keep repeating the same thing. It's a fun ride, you know. My life being a fun ride to watch and I look back, and then I see the message that I that I let it out there for all those girls. You want to start doing MMA? It's like just believe in yourself, you know. Training, training. You know, train with the best, find the best gym to start doing this, the right thing. And yeah, I feel like I'm happy and what a night, huh? Yes. I want to watch again. <laughs> it's like, it's unbelievable. I'm very happy and that's it. Okay, I got one more question for you. Um, you said that you, if you could relive this night, um, if you've gone through all the the, uh, the other fighters in the weight class, is there anybody that you previously previously fought that you would give another chance at the title? Honestly, tonight is my night. I don't even want to think about nobody right now. I just want to go through, enjoy every single moment tonight, and I really like this is my moment. I think about me right now. I'm so happy. And my coach, my teammates, my my family, everybody's so happy right now. I can't think about nobody else. Just me right now. And all those people really was there for me, believing with me. And went through all those things in my career, up and downs, and still like believing in me and they they always tell me, you're gonna be the greats one day. I believe in you. And now, I wanna share with those per people, and I only think about them right now, honest. Amanda, the, the timing of your kick was perfect. What did she do to make you think, I gotta do this right now, I get, this is time? You know, I repeat a couple times, hook and straight. She always run that way. And then I hear my coach, like, Amanda, finish with the kick, the next one, all right? And I always, like, prepare, prepare. I saw she was scared of my hand the whole time. And when I did it again, I followed the kick, and that was amazing feeling right there. I always want to use my, kick more, my kicks more in the fights. Tonight was a perfect day with a perfect opponent to like show I really have a, a good kick as well. Were, were you surprised that it ended so fast? Did you, did you expect a longer fight? No, actually, I, I was surprised how Holly showed up. I thought she's gonna move a line in this fight like she always does. But tonight I feel like she really was kind of stopped in front of me and I have to plan something else like, Wow, I don't expect that. I thought she's gonna like run in and out like she always does. And I have to go to a plan B and I gotta finish it. I know you say you don't wanna think about anybody else, but was that so easy that you would never probably fight her again or, or would you consider that? Holly? Yes. No, no, I don't think it was easy. I think it was, I have a very good timing, you know? I got the right moment. I didn't even know, I, don't, I didn't even think Holly expected that, you know? But uh, we all know Holly's pretty tough opponent. But um, tonight was my night. W would, you, would you consider fighting her again? Uh, like, uh, let's the, the, the division, like, run, you know? Yeah. I, wanna, I wanna see all the, those girls really work hard to be in the top 10. I feel like now Holly's gonna go back to the line and, and fight more. You know, she's a great fighter. I know she can do. But uh, I look forward now. I look to, to see all the opponents. Those girls wait so much, you know? Yeah. So, like, they, they have to have a chance as well. But when you look at the division, it, 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 from the outside looking in, it doesn't look like there's anybody who can challenge you. And I know you probably would like a good challenge, but uh, name them if you, if, if, do you know anybody who could challenge you? We all see. You know, this next couple, this next couple of days, for sure, you're gonna have in the next. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, 
congratulations. Thank you. Um, who is the difference with the Amanda who lose with Kanthingano and this Amanda champ champ? My mind. Your mind. I think like a champ champ. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda, over here. This is to your right. Dana White had high praise for you, not just as the best female fighter ever, but he, he called you one of the best ever to do it. And it all, hasn't always been like that uh, in terms of him heaping praise on you. What's it been like for you to go through that evolution, to have to prove to him who you are? I feel great now, you know, than if he always right away love me. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like that. I like this challenge, you know. I like putting myself out, out there in a, in a bad situation to see how my brain work it out, you know? I love to see those things. And this is normal, you know? I feel like you have, if you have to prove, you have to prove. Keep working. And if you, if you do something right, you're gonna, you're gonna get it there. You're gonna, you're gonna get in it, you know? You're gonna get it the the and the respect. I feel like, me, Dana, like, you know, like, um, when you, you fight with your dad and you, next day you guys talk, talk again. That's normal, you know? Like, actually, we never fight. Only a couple things was a misunderstanding. But I love him, you know? He's my boss. We've been working so well. And, yeah, he gave me the opportunity that I ask for all the time. I text him, like, give me this fight. Give me, believe in me, believe in me. And okay, okay, I'm gonna do it. And we, we get along very well, and I'm very happy to be a part of this, of this company, you know? And I will keep growing with them. Keep evolving, evolving, and retire champion. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Thank you, guys, appreciate it. John, congratulations on, on another victory. You know, Thank afterwards, you. You, you, you kind of were apologetic to a degree, right? That you didn't necessarily deliver what you wanted. So in your head, do you feel like this was a, a disappointing performance or a, a subpar performance from you? I, I, it would be disrespectful to Tiago and his great team to say that it was a subpar performance. I, I met a fighter who came game. You know, he's a, he's a black belt in Muay Thai. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, and I fought him where he is comfortable. And uh, as a result, I have sore feet and sore legs. Uh, but I'm very grateful that, uh, that I came out on top. He came in in a wheelchair as well. I'm just curious, as the fight was progressing, how aware were you of his physical condition? And was it just his power that kept you from really, you know, opening up the arsenal and, 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 and really seeking that finish? Yeah, you know, he was, he was extremely powerful. You know, his kicks were powerful, his punches were powerful. And I wanted to play a smart game. Um, it probably been, would have been a lot smarter to get him to the ground and test him there. Uh, but I felt like I was winning at what he was absolute best at, you know. Um, I feel like his team had him optimally prepared. His cardio was great. Um, his punches and kicks were great. And I felt like I, that was his best, you know, that was his best. And I, and I found a way to win on the feet at what he's absolute best at. And so uh, in a rematch, uh, if that were to happen, 
obviously I need to make some adjustments and, and make smarter choices. Look for uh, maybe attack him where he's a little weaker. But I am proud because his kickboxing and his stand-up is what he's known for. I faced it head on 25 minutes and, uh, and I found a way to come out on top, so. Did you know he was hurt? Um, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I felt like in the first round he kicked me and I checked a kick and I felt like uh, maybe he hurt his foot, but I haven't seen any injury reports. What is his injury? I think his knee, he said. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know his knee was hurt at all. I figured he maybe hurt his foot. I remember in the first round, he threw a, uh, a right leg kick and I checked outside and I thought it was his foot that was hurt, but it's good to know it was, it was his knee. So you get to the decision, you line up, they start reading a the split result, they read a score for him. What's going through your mind at that point? Uh, I was like, please, not like this, you know? I, I, uh, I was confident that I won the fight. My coaches wouldn't lie to me. They said, John, we feel like you won every round. Um, so I was just extremely grateful. Honestly, to, to have a fight like that is extremely humbling. It, you know, it, it drives me to study more, you know, work harder and uh, take the game even more seriously. That, that was a good, uh, it was a good warning for me tonight. And last thing for me, John, what is your physical condition? We haven't seen an injury report on you. You just said sore feet, but what's the status and, and what does it mean for your return, this busy stretch that you're on? Give us the idea of what's next. Uh, right now, my feet are hurt. Uh, both shins are, are swollen, but nothing's injured. It, things just hurt. And, and that's what you get when you, when you stand with a Muay Thai black belt. You're gonna do a lot of shin and feet colliding. And, uh, and it's a small price to pay for this, uh, for this great victory. John, I know before uh, coming out here, we, we had talked and you were talking about how powerful he was. Did he exceed your expectations? Yeah, he did. Honestly, I would have to say he's, he's the most powerful guy I've ever fought. Uh, you know, I blocked almost all of his face punches. I think maybe two of them actually landed on me. And, uh, and boy, he knocked my mouthpiece out. Uh, even when I was blocking, you know, it was making me, my defense rock side to side. Very powerful. You know, I, I, I think Tiago represented his team, his country so well. I'm, I, I wish nothing but the best uh, for Tiago. I think when he gets back to Brazil, um, people need to give him a parade or do something really special for him. He should be very, very proud of himself. Uh, he handled it. Uh, he handled defeat like a man. You know, he came up, gave me a big old hug, and it's just like, man, sorry for some of the negative things I said about you before the fight. And that was something I wasn't expecting. And uh, he was like, man, when you ever come down to Rio, I'm taking you out. I was like, I will definitely party with you, Tiago. <laughs> he, uh, he was cool, man, my type of guy. So, so what's going through your mind when you were in this fight and he, he started to exceed expectations? Or, I mean, I, I'm sure you've been in situations before, but what's going through your mind when that happens? Um, you know, it, it's the hard that makes the sport great. And, um, and I decided, you know, in the midst of a, of a heated battle to, uh, to just continue to fly, you know, and, and to earn every minute of victory um, by staying focused and uh, staying sharp and, uh, and playing the game. It was great, man. It was, it was a real chess match. It was like a chess match with someone that has twice the power where I had the reach advantage, he, I think he had, had the clear power advantage. And uh, we made each other uh, great opponents. And people were booing, um, but man, if, if, you are, if you know anything about kickboxing, I think, I think we put on a pretty decent level. And uh, did you, have you seen Holly or did you talk to her about what, what, what did you say to her? Because you know, I know you guys have a good relationship. Yeah, uh, she came up to me and she gave me a hug. and. Uh, and uh, I just told her that, I told her that, you know, Holly, I said, little girls should have uh, Barbie dolls of you. They should have posters of you on their wall because you're so courageous. You're so courageous. I mean, most people uh, don't want to fight the Ronda Rouseys of the world. Most people are, are happy being a, a gatekeeper or like a sea level fighter. You know, Holly, every time, she steps up to the challenge against the meanest girl, the girl who's the killer, you know? And she does it uh, with grace and with a smile on her face. And, uh, you know, even the way it worked out tonight, I could see her wanting a rematch. She's just that type of person. Uh, she has big balls.
She has big balls. <laughs> um, and I'm so proud of her. I am so proud of her. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Tate. Hey, John, uh, right in front here. It, you fought the fight you wanted to fight. And you know how judges are notoriously inconsistent. Had the scores gone the other way, would you be angry at yourself for the way you fought? No, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been angry at myself. I would have. I would have felt like I could have done more. I would have been motivated and inspired to get back in there and and do more in a rematch. Uh, but it didn't go that way. You know, my, my coaches, uh, Greg Jackson, Mike Wingle, John, all the guys. Uh, they've been around for a long time, especially Wink in the kickboxing department. And he was pretty sure that I won the fight. He, he, his energy, he wasn't worried. And that's why when uh, the judge was reading the final verdict, you know, um, I put my hands up way before they gave the, uh, the announcement because I trusted my coach's opinion. They said, John, you, you clearly won the fight. I haven't seen it yet, so I got to get back out there and, and watch it and, you know, criticize myself and see how I can get better. I wonder when he did hurt his uh, left leg in that sequence you referenced before, you seemed to notice it and you kind of went after him and he came after you with a, a combination. Did any of those land on you and, and bother you at all? Um, I think the, the best punch he landed was uh, early, or maybe the first round where he actually knocked my mouthpiece out. Um, outside of that, uh, I will have to watch the fight very closely, but I felt like I blocked. Uh, the majority of his his punches, he he showed a little bit of a weakness uh, in my defense with with some of the leg kicks. But as far as my my instincts, uh, when someone's throwing punches at me, I feel like you know they're not the most technical, uh, you know, bobbing and weaving or what. But but I do make people miss. I'm I'm curious about your lack of combinations. I mean, was it because he was so powerful? Like you didn't throw a ton of combinations. It didn't seem like mm, Kevin. <laughs> um, uh huh. What do you think you did? I, I felt like uh, no, no, I didn't throw a lot of combinations. You're right. You're right. Um, I just felt like I played it smart. It was very humbling for me. I felt like I played it smart. At the end of the day, um, I think it means a lot to my team that they have a champion. And uh, and you're not gonna always look incredibly impressive, you know, especially like it's a warrior, mighty warrior like Tiago. So just the win, I'm super satisfied with, really. Yeah, I'm really excited about that win. And last thing for me, you know, I know you got to get healthy before you start thinking about what's next, but obviously there's a big fight next month. Would you fight the winner if they showed you the money? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, me and Daniel, we, we're, we're both speaking the same thing. It's, it's going to be a super fight, and the only reason the only reason why it hasn't happened is because uh, I think UFC scheduling. When the UFC is ready for the fight, uh, they know they have two guys who are willing and able, and they'll approach us, and they'll just say, "Hey, you know, this is what you guys are going to get paid," and and I'm sure me and Daniel will be happy. And if Stipe were to win, would you uh, be willing to uh, fight him as well? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be willing to fight Stipe as well. I would rather fight Daniel because I feel like I have his uh, recipe. Uh, but, uh, but I fight Stipe too. But really, man, to be honest with you, Kevin, my, my real, my passion is at the light heavyweight division. There's, there's so many guys, there's so many guys that are coming up right now and uh, so much work to be done still. You know, a lot of people always say, John, you've cleared a division. And I don't look at it that way. I mean, Jan, Johnny Walker, are you impressed with him? I'm impressed by, by all the fighters. I'm impressed by all the fighters. There's so many guys, man. I think with Johnny, you know, if I got to see him face a guy who was ranked top five in the world and he was able to do what he's been doing, I'd be a lot more impressed. Um, but, you know, I feel like if you gave me the level of competition he was fighting, you'd see some pretty impressive things, you know. So it's just hard to, it's hard to see how great this guy really is when he's, when he's facing the level of competition he's facing. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin Ioli. You're welcome, John Jones. <laughs> My man. Hey, We've come a long way, Kevin. <laughs> we've, had our, we've had our ups and downs. More downs for sure. You keep on creeping your way back into my life somehow. I don't know, I don't know how you're doing it. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, hey. You talk a lot about uh, Thiago's power. 
Yes. Did you get surprised about his power or anything in his game? No, I expected it. I expected it, and I think that's why the fight was so boring. You know, I, I didn't want to get caught with a big shot, and I, I played it smart. I played it smart. You know, people would have loved it if I would have been reaching out with jabs and crosses and and getting into those exchanges. But not only does he hit hard, but he hits fast. And so uh, I'll go back to the drawing board, and I, and I'll I'll get better for sure. Uh, you know, especially I'm excited for. Our, our rematch when it happens. I want to see Tiago work his way back up the ladder. And uh, and I think he beats most most light heavyweights. So I know he'll be back. I don't know if it'll be in a year, or year and a half. But when he does come back, you'll see a different strategy out of me for sure. What did you talk after the fight in the octagon? Oh, Tiago was just like, hey man, when you come to Rio, let me take you out. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I could see him being a good time. So, so uh, I'm excited to I love Brazil, man. I really do. People, people try to try to create this this dialogue of of oh you've beaten so many Brazilians, you know, and 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 I tell people all the time I've beat way more Americans than I've beat Brazilians. Um, I really respect that country a lot. I mean, a lot of the greatest fighters have come from there, and uh, the people are just so loving and, and so welcoming to me. I think they respect me a lot, and uh, yeah, much love for Brazil. Do you want to fight in Brazil? I would love to fight in Brazil. I really would, but not against the Brazilian. I think they say something like, who, I'm a hey, yeah, I can't say it. That means you will die, <laughs> and I don't want to die. So, uh, so yeah, I'll fight anyone else uh, but a Brazilian in Brazil. Make it happen, guys. We just had Amanda here, and she considers herself as the best female fighter of all time. What do you think about that? And do you consider yourself as the greatest fighter of all time? I, I do, in fact, uh, think Amanda is the GOAT. Um, but at the same time, Holly Holm was so close to being the GOAT. I mean, if, if Holly would have won this fight tonight, I think she would have been unquestionably the greatest female fighter of all time. I mean, let's not forget she is a multiple-time world champion in boxing, and she's the only boxer to ever come to the UFC and win a world title. And if she would have been able to derail uh, Amanda Nunes, no one could argue this girl being the greatest fighter of all time. That's why I think she should keep her head high because, I mean, this is a game of inches. And, uh, and she was inches away from being the best ever. So still the same person. Um, things just didn't go her way tonight. She needs to get back to the drawing board and, and do her thing. And as far as myself, I do look at myself as being one of the most dominant fighters in MMA history. Um, especially considering the competition I've faced. Uh, but as far as greatness, you know, there's a lot of things about me that's not great. And so greatness will always be an opinion. And, uh, and I'm done trying to win over uh, people's opinions. I don't really care what people think about me. Um, but being dominant, that, that's something. I could be a real douchebag and be the most dominant. And that's something I'm striving for. But what's, what is your opinion? Excuse me? I could be a real douchebag. So the internet's going to be like, he already is a douchebag. <laughs> I'm like, uh, OK. But what is your opinion? Who, you are the greatest fighter of your time, in your opinion. I think I'm one of the most dominant. But I don't want to sit up here and toot my own horn. There's been a lot of guys that do a lot of great things. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Hey, John. Hello. Over here, dude. Hey, what up, dude? Full reptile. All right. Good to see you. Congratulations tonight. Thank you, mate. Mate. Uh, <laughs> so, obviously, you were throwing uh, a few super special moves out there. Were you inspired tonight by Jorge Masvidal's flying knee when you threw yours? Um, no, I've been working on flying knees. I've been working on that a lot. Uh, maybe somewhere subconsciously, him throwing one is why I went for one. But that's something we practice a lot. I thought the moment would be there. Um, which it was. I'm not sure if it actually landed on him or not. I got to go back and watch it. Um, but, you know, with a little bit more belief, I, I probably would have caught him with it. Um, but, yeah. Thanks a lot, man. That's it. That's it. Mm, easy, easy day. John, one question right Yes, here. sir. Uh, I spoke with you in, in L.A. at the media day, and I spoke with your coach, Greg Jackson, uh, at media day here. And you both used the phrase, uh, the unexpected becomes expected when preparing for Tiago Santos. After spending 25 minutes with him, did that statement uh, become true in, in your mind? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we expected some capoeira techniques, which is very unexpected for most people. Uh, but for us, because we've seen him so many times throughout training camp, 
I mean, he didn't come close to landing any type of spin attack. Um, they, they looked, I felt like we saw it coming from a mile away. And I think that's one of his greatest gifts is that unpredictability. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, he's not as unpredictable as people think. You just got to study a little bit more. And uh, yeah. Hi, John. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, first, I wanted to ask you, um, Amanda Nunes at the LA Media Day was very open about how you two sharing a card has always been something she's looked forward to and uh, talked about how good of a relationship you two have. And obviously, with your friendship with Holly Holm, did this uh, provide any um, awkward moments for you uh, being so close to both? Uh, well, I I do have great respect for Amanda Nunes. I am a fan of greatness. You know, I'm not a big fan of teams, but I love great individuals. You know, I love Tom Brady, LeBron James. You know, you know, I love people. You know, Jordan. I love people. Anderson Silva. You know, a lot of people like to see great people fall. I don't. I'm really a big fan of greatness. Um, um, but there was no way, shape, or form was I rooting for Amanda tonight. You know, Holly is is uh, a very dear friend of mine's. I mean, she sold, she, she, she sold me my last house, you know what I mean? My, my daughters look up to her. She's friends with my fiance. Um, um, it was weird, yeah, because Amanda, she, she told me, she said, uh, you remember when uh, we were in New York and you had your belt in the air and I reached over and I touched your belt and I was just like, yeah, I remember. She was just like, I felt like you put like a lot of good energy on me and into me and, um, and and I want to steal that energy again. And she like slapped my belt, and I was like, "Hey, get a get back! You're fighting my sister," you know. Um, um, yeah, it was just weird, man. It was just weird. I really wanted Holly to do it. I do respect Amanda a lot, um, and I'm honored to fight in the same era as her. Uh, but tonight was was uh, it's not it wasn't bittersweet. It was just bitter for me to watch my sister go down. All right, and last one from me. Just out of morbid curiosity, what was going through your mind when you did that that jumping sidekick? Looked like you were aiming for uh, Tiago Santos's knee. Oh, oh man! Well, you know my coach teaches teaches us to be malicious. This is combat, and at the end of the day, uh, I mean Tiago was trying to break my jaw tonight. He was trying to give me um, brain damage tonight. He was trying to you know he was trying to take some years off my brain. And so uh, this is a very malicious game. And if a guy can give you a stutter for the rest of your life or memory loss, I think an even trade off is to give him a lump for the rest of his life. That's just the game we play. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, John, uh, you're, uh, you've won in so many creative ways throughout your career. And uh, you come from a football family, and I wondered if uh, the influence of, of them, maybe you could say that in football they say defense wins championships. Do you think you would sum up tonight uh, in that way? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I think what worked against me is I, I've, I've been working with um, a coach, Frank, and, um, and he has he sacrificed his body over the course of this, over the course of this camp. Shout out to you, Frank Lester. Um, and he comes and he, he, he spars with me um, every practice. And I've, I feel like he's helped me with my defense tremendously. And my gift back to him is not to counter him with strikes or punch him in the face. Um, because he's such a good partner, uh, you know, just blocking his shots is, makes me happy enough. And tonight, I found myself out there playing this game that I've been doing all camp, which is just making sure I'm not getting hit. And uh, instead of countering back right away or go on to the offense. So it was a lesson learned for me. I need to uh, not only be sure to be just out of reach of punches and strikes, um, but I need to be retaliating. I got to get back to punching my teammates in the face. And so, uh, so yeah, defense did win a championship tonight. And, uh, and some good offense, too, though. I appreciate it. Thank you, and congratulations again. Man, you got a great voice for radio. I'll have to get into it someday. Yeah, listen to you. I appreciate it. Kind of like a Howard Stern sound. You think? I don't know. Well, I, can't, I can't put my finger on it. All right. Well, you can come on the show, and then you can uh, do an, we'll do a little uh, expose on that. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll do a little Howard Cosell. Hello, everyone, Howard Cosell. There you go. See? John Bones Jones. Hey, you know you got the gift. Use that thing. <laughs> Definitely not a face for TV.
Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sitcom. <laughs> Hey, John. Uh, Algerman Santos, Eagle Broadcasting. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, you mentioned that you knew um, of uh, Tiago's um, skill being a black belt in Muay Thai. Um, was it your original game plan to stick to standing up, or were you uh, tempted to take him down at any point in the, in the game? You know, honestly, man, I think, I think my pride was a little intact. I felt like if I were to be the one to shoot, that would mean he was winning in the kick, kickboxing department. I think I could be honest enough to say that. I think my pride was intact. It was a very challenging match on the feet. Um, and I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of having to take him down. And so I stood there and, uh, and I stayed ultra focused for 25 minutes straight to avoid those powerful shots and, um, and land my own. And, uh, and I won at where he's strong. I'm not too worried about a rematch um, because I know there's a whole different can of worms I could have opened and they were never open. I don't think I even attempted to shoot on them. Um, and I'm curious what will happen when I do shoot on them the next time. Is that gonna be something like your, your MO uh, for future fights maybe that whatever strength your, your opponent uh, has, is that what you're gonna study and, and focus on doing? As yeah, I, I part feel like of a, a challenge for you? Yeah, for sure. I feel like I've been doing that for a long time. Just trying to fight the guys that wear their best. I'm here for it to be hard. You know, I, I, I want good challenges. And every time I go through crazy battles, I learn a lot about myself. I learn where I'm weak. I learn where I need to improve. Tonight, I'm, I'm going to watch this fight probably eight times. And I want to I wanna figure out how other light heavyweights are looking at me right now. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to be my own biggest critic. And, um, and I'm going to try to be better. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Man, I know some people brought tickets to my after party. I think I may uh, go do that. Maybe we can do two more questions. Anybody have any good ones? John, quickly, you, you, over here, you talked about sticking to your game plan. You heard the crowd booing. Was there any point you were tempted to deviate from that game plan and say, okay, I'm going to get more aggressive because I hear what the fans are saying? No, no. It, it doesn't feel good to be booed, um, but not many people know what it feels like to be in there. Not many people knows what it feels like to be in there, and I can't allow them to uh, to make decisions for me. It'd be disrespectful to my coaches, be disrespectful to my gift, to myself. Um, no way. I feel like that's a very rookie move to start switching up your strategy because someone's booing you. Jones, uh, mm -hmm. December, March, and now July. How do you feel fighting so often? And do you still want to fight one more this year? Yes, sir. My, my goal is to fight uh, in December. And I'm just going to go to the drawing board. Shout out to Chandler Jones, one of the greatest uh, defensive ends in the NFL right now. I love him so much. Oh, it's OK to clap for him. He's a nice guy. He won't bite you. Ugly joker, that's for sure. Twins? No, 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 no. I'm definitely cute. <laughs> I love him so much. Um, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, you, you were saying that you still want to fight in December. This yes. Year. Uh -huh. So how do you feel fighting so often since the last years you couldn't? It feels good. It feels good. I need to talk to my coaches about uh, just getting, making sure that I stay fired up. Tonight I was just so relaxed. I was talking and laughing and dancing, and, and I wasn't scared to come out here and work. And that could be a bad thing. You know, you gotta be you got to be terrified a little bit to be sharp. And I, I just felt so comfortable, you know. I was working against me tonight. I had no sense of urgency to, to overdo anything. I was just out there cruising and winning the rounds, and, and that's not cool. People want to see me go out there and finish people and, 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 and go hard. And so I think my, my comfort and familiarity with the octagon kind of worked against me tonight. And so I am willing to fight in December. I want to fight in December, but I got to make sure the fire is, is like well lit, if that makes sense. Yeah, my, my, my last question, John. Uh, so after December and March, now we didn't hear anything about that picogram, picogram, or whatever it is. So is it a done deal forever? I hope so. Hey, guys. God bless you. Get home safe. You're in Vegas. Have a little fun. And uh, I love you guys. Love the fans that are listening. I love you guys so much. 
Thank you for the support. It means everything. You are my motivation. And God is good. Jesus is number one. <laughs>